Afternoon, Nal Horan and Mark McDonald from Modest Golf. Welcome to the NI Golf Podcast. Thanks for having us. And, and thank you for following the uh, podcast. Very kind. No problem at all. Uh, before we get into the Galgorm and Modest Golf, first of all, how's your game? I haven't been playing as much as I would like to recently. Um, played a couple of weeks ago and I didn't play too bad. A couple of things I could work on, but I've got, I'm doing other stuff at the minute, so I haven't got the time. Yeah, you've been kind of busy with your music career. I have to say the song's class, so... Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Right, so on, on to Modest Golf. Where did the idea come about for Modest Golf? I, I'm, I'm presuming it was you and your music management got this idea. Yeah, it was. Um, I remember it well. We were we were having a we were having a drink one night, and um, me and my and the two two main guys at Modest, uh, Richard and Harry, and uh, we're, I was saying, I said to them, I said, why don't we start like a sports end of Modest together, and um, and you know keep the Modest name and start our own separate company. Um, and they were straight away loved the idea, and we sat down and then afterwards and had a talk about how we were going to go about it. Obviously, golf is a passion of all of ours. Um, um, with that, both expertise in, in music and just business in general, and uh, our love for golf and pa- our passion for golf, we thought we'd start the golf end of it. Um, and then that's where Maka came in. Maka had a long-standing relationship with Modest beforehand. Um, you know, obviously Maka used to work with <coughs> well, Adidas and TaylorMade, so it was. Um, it was a, a relationship that he had built with uh, with Modest before, so when it came to making the making the company official, uh, it was there was it was obvious who we were going to get in really. Um, uh, obviously, I've, him and his brother have, have worked in golf for a long time and, and are well known around the golf scene, so it was um, it was a no-brainer really. And so, yeah. and then that's where Mark. Took over. And on a day-to-day basis, Mark, what does what does Modest Golf do? Day-to-day, um, you know, knows first ever statement he made on Modest Golf was he wanted to do his bit to develop the next generation of golfing talent. Uh, He also recognized that he wanted to bring in people who who knew the golf world. So um, he gave me a great opportunity along with Ian Watts, who uh, was formerly director of TaylorMade uh, for 30 years. He signed major champions. He signed world number ones to TaylorMade. So between us, you know, we know a little bit about, about golf. So that's obviously how it started. And in terms of day to day, it's just uh, locating the best talent in in Europe um, initially, and then around the world, and um, and just really finding the best talent with the best attitudes, great young men and women who've been brought up uh, extremely well, who've got a great talent, who are prepared to work hard to achieve you know their dreams. Well, you've been around the European Tour and the Challenge Tour a fair bit. So, does now now do you do a bit of the scouting for the company then, in terms of who you're going to sign? Yeah, well, we, we were, me and myself, Mark and Ian are in touch every single day through emails. Um, we're on top of it. Um, you know, we, Ian, Ian's more of our, our tour guy, you would say, and kind of spends his time out on the tour and obviously knows a lot of people within the touring world as he spent a lot of time on the truck around, <coughs> around Europe and wherever. Um, so he's got, you know, a lot... A lot of the a lot of the golfers are of us, as we can see on a day to, on a day to day basis on a tour. A lot of the golfers are on a, a similar basis, talent wise, and some obviously just a little bit better than others. But it's about who has it up here in the head and who can take it down the stretch when they're in contention. Well, I was going to say, what are you looking for whenever you're trying to scout somebody? So it is that yeah, it's, mindset. It's just like you know, if you're if you're in contention and see who can who can bring it home, really. Um, and obviously, then hard working lads, we want to know from word on the street who's who are the hard workers because. You know, if you think you're working hard, there's someone working harder than you, and that's that's just fact. I think it's um, for us, it's two things: attitude and ability. You know, people can have ability, but if they don't have the correct attitude, then their ability will be wasted, and vice versa. So, for us, you know, we do a lot of research, and we're in a very fortunate position. The business has been set up 18 months now, and we're being approached by very, very credible golfers asking for representation. But we've always said from the start, we're going to make it boutique. We're going to pick our players, really back them, and give them all the resources in order to to make it. So um, for us, we take a lot of time, we do a lot of research, we make a lot of phone calls um, through the contacts we have to find out what these guys are like, how they behave on the course, how they behave off the course, um, do they put work in, do they go that extra mile? So for us, it's it, we like to fit, we've, we feel like we're bringing a modern approach to to golf representation and golf management, and that is it's not just about the golf. The ability is great, and obviously it's needed, but there's a hundred different things as well that they need to to do to to be able to make it. 
And who all have you got on your books so far, and, and what services do you provide for the golfers? Who would you say? Who, 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 yeah, who have you got on the books? We got um, uh, we got Tr uh, Tristan Lawrence. Tristan Lawrence is a um, two-time South African amateur champion. Did that when he was 14 and 15 years old. He's the only player in South African golf history to do that. We got the Rookie of the Year on the Sunshine Tour, Christian Buswedenhut. Uh, and we have uh, Guido Miliozzi, uh, Italian number one Italian amateur, uh, just turned pro too. Uh, all the all boys are playing on the on the on the challenge tour, and we've recently, basically today, today yeah, today. today. Exclusive. That's an exclusive, isn't it? Podcast, podcast exclusive, yeah. just for just for Paul Kelly. <laughs> I hope you say it today. Saying Ivan Cantero, who's uh, in the top five amateur in, in the world, um, who's a young Spanish kid, uh, 18 years old, unbelievable talent as well. So we feel very, and we're about, actually we'll be. After the Walker Cup, we'll be we'll be announcing um, possibly two more, two more uh, signing, two more signings. Uh, so it's it's exciting, as Mark said. It's it's 18 months old, and you know we have um, a nice little stable and keeping a boutique. I've always noticed. Sorry, I've always noticed that at Modest, one thing I always notice is that no matter how big or small the act is, everyone gets the same management. The boys, are, you know, you feel you know, like. It's, it could be easier for us to go and pick a pick a favourite there, you know, and you know, ill manage the others, and that's not the way we want. It. Well, we've heard of a few ructions in the European tour eh? circles about things like that, where people in other management companies aren't getting the same kind of exposure. So, you know, it's difficult. Yeah, I mean, you always hear stories. Obviously, we we wouldn't comment on that. We don't know too much about it. But um, yeah, in terms of obviously what we do, uh, we're just very focused on what we kind of doing in our stable and, and that's exactly right what Niall said it's about giving every player the level of support the, you know the same level of support and in terms of what we do for them it's it's pretty much every, in short all we want them to focus on is hitting a five iron or a driver you know if they can just focus on their game we'll do everything else around that um, to make them go onto the course with a clear head and um, that's emotional support and um, generating sponsors which is why we're here today at the gallery Belfast um, so every aspect of away from golf because in sport now these athletes whether it be football golf there's so much noise going on around them it's really just the skill to just keep it so it's they can just go onto that golf course and worry about their game and if we do that we're doing a good job and in terms of closer to home now have you spotted anybody in the irish ranks that you you might like to sort of say or yeah of course that's that's the aim and that's why we've been involved in northern irish open for the last two years because it's close to home and you want to see who you can pick up and obviously when there's spare invites flying around we're Want to give it to the local lads and the Irish boys, or, <clears throat> and hence the fact that we set up the the amateur qualifying for for this. Um, and there was two a Northern Irish and a Southern Irish guy who both qualified, um, which is incredible. One being 17 years old. Yeah, we um, we we felt it right. we doing the event in Northern Ireland. We really wanted to give back to and give some playing opportunities, even if they're not our players, to Ireland and Northern Ireland. So we did, obviously, as Niall just said, the Northern Ireland Amateur Open, where an over 18 and under 18 qualified. Obviously, Colin Fairweather did an incredible job to, to qualify as leading amateur. Uh, and then we've obviously invited JR uh, John Roscoe Brint, who's a friend of Niall and mine, and. Uh, you know, he's had a good season. I, th I think he came second at the Livam, Livam Trophy. Um, and these guys just need opportunities to play. And if they get opportunities, they will flourish. Um, so we said, if we're coming to Ireland, we're coming to Northern Ireland, whatever happens, obviously we'll support our boys first and foremost, but then we will give back to the golfing community and, and provide opportunities for people to play. Yeah, you'll be playing in the Pro-Am again this year at Galgorm then on Wednesday? I actually won't this time, sadly. I've got a few little music bits and pieces to do, but I'll be back for the weekend. I'll be back on, uh, yeah, towards the weekend and be around for the for the whole weekend. I can't wait to see the shoot. Just in terms of that, <clears throat> in terms of the day job, <clears throat> excuse me, and the um, and the fan base that you have, do you find it difficult to play in the pro arms when you have that kind of attention on the course from the young ladies? Uh, it's it kind of you know it's it's good and it's bad. Um, you kind of feel a little bit embarrassed, you know. You're not the greatest golfer, and people, when you're playing proms, people they expect you to be as good as the fellow you're playing with. Um, but I think it's just good for the game, making noise, you know. Hence the fact that we're, you know, we do this kind of was on the radio this morning and cool FM trying to get people down, try and introduce people to the game. I think that's the way, the only way. I this is the good, the great side about it. Um, I did play one pro am where there was no was. Because if they, if they announce I'm coming, then there's going to be a lot of girls flying around. But I played in a program in America with Rosie, and we ended up winning it, but there was no one following us. It was great. 
I think um, taking my modest hat off for a moment as just a golf fan, you know, I've obviously played golf since I was eight and my father introduced me. Um, you know, there were lots of noises a couple of years ago that uh, numbers in golf were slipping. Obviously, you know, kids want to play their PlayStation or whatever these days. So, um, you know, a lot of the pros have gone on record uh, and said, obviously, people like Nile, people like Justin Timberlake, people away from golf. You know, the, the golfers have a very golf following. You know, if Nile, if Justin Timberlake, if, if those guys can even introduce 3% of their following to pick up a club to give golf a try, that's going to have a massive, massive impact on the game of golf and it's going to appeal. And, and you know, why Nile's voice is so important in the Northern Ireland Open, it's always had strong crowds. However, you know, if. The, the guys on the Challenge Tour, they are the next generation of golfing superstar. You know, graduates from a Challenge Tour have won over 300 times on the European Tour. There's been over 15 major winners. They've had a Ryder Cup captain. Uh, obviously, last summer, you had a gold and silver medalist in the Olympics, you know, Justin and Stenson. These guys came from a Challenge Tour. But right now, these boys who are playing, and like our boys, they want to play in front of crowds. They want to showcase their, their, their games in front of the ultimate pressure, which is big crowds. So... Obviously, Gal Gorm, Ross, and Gary do a great job, but with Niall's influence as well, by getting his some of his fan base down to, to give get golf a try, it obviously benefits the players and really helps them play under those sorts of pressures. And as you say, even if there's a small percentage of conversion rate for girls who take up the game, you know, you could be signing the next uh, Lydia Co or somebody, you know, in a few years that would come by. That'd be great, yeah. Um, I think, like, anything that you can do to bring, like what Steph Curry did, the basketball player did in the States this week, he got. Uh, sponsors a uh, exemption into the web.com brought out he had a gallery with him the whole way around the course he missed the cut but only by a couple of shots but like if he can bring some of them nba fans into that into the game it's there's, it's it's only good you know um i think it's it's incredible as you say if we can get some girls to start playing we could be signing the next michelle Wee, lydia co whatever it is um but yeah that's that's the, the positive way of looking at it i guess and that 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 leads us on to obviously shoot out Sunday in the new the new format um, you know we've been very fortunate to build relationships over the last 18 months with Keith Pellet at the European Tour with Alan at the Challenge Tour and you know these guys are making a real effort to just mix things up slightly and we felt being a younger management company we should adopt that we're not saying shoot out Sunday will happen every year um, but we felt this year we wanted to keep the traditions of the game of golf but just have a little twist on that Sunday to appeal to that younger audience which is why it's going to be a fast and quick format and as I say we don't know if it'll be every year but right now when there is that kind of shift towards hey let's get more non-golfers out into the course we thought you know we'd, we'd give it a go this year and, and see how it went down and, and we've had incredible yeah, positive it feedback too, yeah. it's, it's, just, it's, it's just so exciting because like, when, I, when I think about it and, and picture the 18th green on a Sunday, mm. and every game having because of the stroke play having to come down the 18th is every game having to come down the 18th is just incredible, really. And we were explaining to me, you know, talking to some of the golfers last night, um, and for some of them who didn't, you know, 100% understand it when they, when when we were explaining it to them, and there you could see the smiles on their faces. It makes you want to. It makes me even want to go out and play myself, yeah, 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 which is yeah. great. Um, so I just I can't wait. I'm glad that the the, the Challenge Tour and as Mark said, we've had a great relationship with Alan and, and Keith um, and they've been very supportive of everything that we wanted to do um, and uh, it's, it's, it's going to be an incredible weekend we're looking forward to it yeah no definitely and obviously you know we really appreciate NI Golf Podcast we, we hear your podcast every uh, every, your interview was the best. every month yeah 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 so no we do you and Paul have been great I know Paul's obviously too busy to come down today uh, but glad, glad you could make it but uh, no, we, we really appreciate it because you guys have supported us from a word go and we listen to your podcast and, you know, we, uh, we really appreciate all your support and hope to see you down there during the week. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be down. We'll be doing some bits and pieces down there. But it's fantastic to have you, you know, bringing modest golf to Galgon because Galgon was a great event. It's an even fun, more fantastic event now that you guys are involved. It's going to be a very exciting weekend. Can't wait. Look forward to it. Thanks for coming. Yeah, can't wait. Shootout Sunday. We're looking Bye. forward to it. And just before we go, favourite course in the world to play that's not Augusta? And not Mullingar. I, I moved from from Ireland when I was 16, and didn't have the opportunity to play much links golf as I was from the Midlands. And last year when we came for for the Northern Irish Open, we went and played County Down in Port Stewart and uh, or uh, Port Rush, I should say. And I thought Port Rush was my my favourite, most beautiful scenic golf course I've ever seen, and I'm looking forward. To it.
possibly playing it again with the new changes and that I've heard it's incredible Minor, I'd say Port Rush or County Down you know uh, they look, both looked after as well but great courses obviously County Down a few more blind shots but uh, we, <laughs> that's why, that's <laughs> they're still finding our golf balls now at those <laughs> so, but yeah no I mean there's so many incredible uh, golf courses on the doorstep over here so that's why it's so great to be here you know Northern Ireland is you know, one of the best places in the world, golfing capital of the world, isn't it, really? So, And you're head up to Galgoam today for a few? Yeah, we're going to have a bit of a knock this afternoon, actually, yeah. Um, I was just saying, I was just th thinking there, are, like, a couple of facts that people might not know. The, the Northern Irish Open, you know, um, has... Like, or the Northern Irish Open is the closest thing to a European tour event. And, um, and the Northern Irish Open has has basically got, was it, like 50% or the yes. higher attendance than 50% of Euro European tour events. Yeah. Which shows, and obviously recently broke records here at Port Stewart for, for attendance for, the, for Rory's uh, Irish Open. Um, so it shows how, and it's the same in the South when the Irish Open was down there as well. It shows how strong I golf is in Ireland, and as, as the lad said last night, Irish people just love golf. Yeah. Um, so I, when people say that golf is dying and, and there's numbers are going, it's not dying there. So we try and pick it back up again. Yeah, and the crazy thing is, which we never, we've never got involved in, but it's actually a free event, and there's not many things now in the world you can go to for free. So um, to be able to go for free, and it's a, obviously I, I forget the tagline of it's a, it's a golf event for all the family is a tagline yeah. for the event, and that basically hits a nail on the head, and that is it. it whether you're a golfer, non-golfer, kid, adult, come along. There's a gin festival. Uh, there's live music. We're implementing it live music from our, our musical heritage. Um, lots going on for all the family. So uh, I think it's niopen.net.golf uh, is where you can get tickets. And uh, obviously we hope to see loads of people down, in particular Sunday where we're presenting the trophy. So Great. Guys, it's going to be a busy week. Thank you so much for your time and uh, good luck with the event. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mark.